Okay, so let's take a look at what are polymers and some properties of polymers. They are large molecules and they consist of small structural units called monomer residues. Um, they're a chain of atoms that are held together by covalent bonds and carbon is normally in high proportion. In the solid state, the chains pack together randomly or in a neat fashion. So what happens during polymerization is so the monomer residues um, are held together by covalent bonds. The larger that chain of monomer residues, um, the more solid uh, the monomer becomes. And then these chains can pack together. Um, so either in a random fashion or in a neat fashion, which we'll talk about. Some are composed of one type of monomer and others are made up of two or more different types and these are called copolymers. So they've unusual physical behaviors and that's due to their large size and the chain structure. So as I said the length of that chain is going to dictate the material properties the longer the chain that the stronger the polymer um, and the chains can interact with each other giving unique mechanical properties. Now these chains are usually not linear, they're usually in a, some sort of a tangled mess, um, uh, which we've seen, uh, which we can see over here. Um, so thermoplastic materials such as polyethylene, um, here the binding forces are the result of van der Waals forces between molecules and the mechanical entanglement between the chains. Uh, when thermoplastics are heated, there is more molecular movement and the bonds between the molecules can be easily broken. Um, so these thermoplastics, uh, this is the example over here, uh, it's usually a, a tangled mess um, held together by weak van der Waal forces. So when you heat them, these forces can break and the, mo the, the bonds between the molecules are broken. That's thermoplastic. At thermosets then, here a single large network instead of many molecules is formed during a polymerization. And um, for this to happen, the MERS must, ha must have more than two places for bonding to occur. Uh, so you get something like this. And the chains form jointed structures and rings and may fold back and forth to take on a partially crystalline structure. Um, when you heat this, these bonds won't break. So they're thermosets. Okay, the bonds won't break upon reheating. Thermoplastics, the bonds will re-break upon heating. So the chains can be linear, they can be branched, uh, the networks are free or they're cross-linked. Sometimes polymers can arrange themselves in a regular close pack manner forming polymer crystals and usually only uh, chains are capable of forming polymer crystals. Okay, so these networks aren't capable. So we, we've briefly touched on thermoplastics and thermosets. Uh, the thermoplastics can be amorphous or they can be crystalline. Um, and elastomers is the other class of polymer that I will talk about. So elastomers are their chain. Uh, they could be branch or they could be a network type also. They degrade rather than melt when they're heated. Uh, the polymer chains are very loosely intertwined, uh, which makes them very pliable and stretchy. And examples are rubber and silicon rubber. So there are uses for silicon rubbers in uh, medical devices. So uh, breast implants being an obvious example. However, they do degrade rather than melt when heated. The thermosets then, they're a network type of polymer. The chains are tightly knit together, uh, which we, we looked at already. Um, they formed 3D molecule, which once polymerized cannot be softened or reworked with heat. Um, these bonds are, are too strong, so they cannot be re reworked with heat. Um, so examples are things like epoxy adhesives that harden by polymerization. Um, they cross-link and form a cross-link network that is directly related to the strength of the adhesive. Other examples are unsaturated polyesters, polyurethanes and phenolics. So the amount of cross-linking in a thermoset will affect its mechanical properties. So for example, a low level of cross-linking is used for something like a flexible rubber glove. Uh, adding more sulfur atoms um, can produce a car tire and then even more cross-links to make the hard casing of a car battery. So thermoplastics is where I'm gonna focus uh, most of these lectures. 
from now on. Thermoplastics um, are plastics that can be reheated once cooled. Um, so these are the um, the plastics that have the, the loose van der Waals bonds. The, the bonds can break, uh, and you can reform them and reset them. Um, they will return to their solid state upon cooling. So I like this little analogy of the spaghetti. Uh, a thermoplastic, if you imagine a plate of spaghetti, uh, of all the pieces intertwining with each other. If you let it go, go cold and kind of congealed, it'll be a solid mass. If you heat it up, the strands are free to move around again. So I like that analogy. Thermoplastics are very desirable for machinability. So they are great for injection, molding, extrusion, thermoforming, and all the other processing techniques that are used in medical devices manufacturing. Um, due to the resistance of short wave radio wave radiation, they'll gradually degrade under prolonged UV radiation. And as we saw in the sterilization section, uh, they are susceptible to degradation um, from gamma and e beam. But examples are polyethylene, so ultra high molecular weight polyethylene being one specific example, polystyrene, polypropylene, PVC, saturated polyesters, and nylon. And we came across some of these in previous slides uh, to do with catheters and a hernia mesh repair. So crystalline polymer properties have enhanced mechanical strength. So crystalline is where there's a nice ordered fashion to the chains. Uh, because they're neatly ordered, they, um, they give strength in, in that direction. They have a very unique thermal behavior. They have an increased fatigue strength. And examples are polyethylene and PET polyester. So amorphous polymers then are the more rubbery type um, uh, organization of strands. They're soft, um, they're reversibly extendable, so they're elastic. Uh, they're more widely used in the field of biomaterials because of the overall suitability of their properties. So overall, they're flexible, extendable, ductile. Um, and some examples include polystyrene and polymethyl methacrylate. So semi-crystalline, many applications require a combination of the two types of polymer. So, it, for example, the components used in an artificial heart would require the ability to maintain hardness and strength under repeated cycles, so good fatigue strength, while also requiring a high degree of flexibility. So you need a combination. Um, so which brings us to semi-crystalline. So amorphous solid is formed when the chains have little orientation throughout the bulk polymer. And the glass transition temperature, which is an important uh, thing to know, is the point at which the polymer hardens into an amorphous solid. So in the crystallization process, relatively short chains organize themselves into a crystalline structure more readily than long molecules. And the degree of polymerization is an important factor in determining the crystallinity of a polymer. So polymers with a high degree of polymerization have difficulty organizing into layers because they tend to become tangled. And, and conversely, low um, degree of polymerization easily organize into layers. Um, so the degree, so the higher the degree of, of um, polymerization, um, I suppose the more uh, amorphous the polymer is. So the cooling rate also determines the amount of crystallinity. Slow cooling provides time for greater amount of crystallization to occur and um, fast cooling yields higher amorphous materials. Um, so with thermoplastics you can try and and uh, fix or, or influence the, the, the degree of um, semi-crystalline behavior. Above the softening temperature, thermoplastics will exhibit large scale chain mobilities and deformation under shear. Um, as I said, with, with the think of the plate of spaghetti, it's heated up large chain mobility and deformation under shear. However, this change is reversible. And at room temperature, the material is viscoelastic solid. So it's still stretchy, but it's solid. And the behavior is dependent on the chain morphology, the structure, the crystallinity, and the types of additives used. 
um, they are very processable thermoplastics and the ratio of crystalline to amorphous then obviously affects the properties with crystalline having good fatigue and wear resistance but amorphous being uh, transparent with no fixed melt temperature so differences in thermoplastic properties can be achieved by the addition of different ligands um, for example pvc is more rigid than polyethylene because chlorine atoms are larger and they prevent sliding of one molecule over the other so we talked about glass transition temperature briefly and I'll, I'll just move back to it again so at low temperature amorphous polymers are stiff and they're glassy and they soften in a specific temperature range known as the glass rubber transition region and this is the temperature at which the amorphous phase of the polymer is converted between the rubbery and the glassy states i'll show you a graph in a moment to clarify it constitutes the most important mechanical property for all polymers because it affects the hardness the volume the young's modulus and the percent elongation to break um, so know the definition of glass transition temperature it would be very useful and and know the value of the glass transition temperature for the polymer that you are working on but another analogy I like to use here is, is the chewing gum analogy so at a uh, room temperature the chewing gum is in its glassy state and um, it is it's strong but uh, brittle and uh, so this is its crystalline state above the glass transition temperature so let's say somebody is chewing the chewing gum it goes into a very rubbery state so the glass transition temperature is the region or the temperature at which the material converts from its glassy state to its rubbery state okay so I'll just recap briefly uh, what I talked about there um, so what are polymers how they order themselves into chains and networks and how these chains and networks affect the material properties of the polymer and also we talked about last transition temperature thank you